What's up guys, Quizzy here, bringing you guys another tutorial. This time I'm going to be showing you guys how to do this cool um, swirl effect. Um, and I use Cinema 4D and obviously Photoshop to do this. And it's a new effect that uh, I created, in quotations, um, for like these GIF banners. Um, I think it's pretty cool. Uh, it's done with a, a plugin in Cinema 4D called Motion Drop. Uh, link will be in the description to get this. Um, but so we got to move to uh, Cinema 4D first and then we'll come back to Photoshop. So I'll see you then. Okay, once you're in Cinema 4D, you want to set up um, your project and um, you want it. So you basically the effect I went for is when the motion drop came in, it like went over the text. So then the text could appear after it went by and look all cool. So um, we're just going to set up a my standard like banner Cinema 4D type thing so I'm just gonna get a straight on line so this green line lines up with this gray line so it's straight ahead <clears throat> I'm just gonna get a camera there check it and then I'm gonna rotate it up and then bring it straight down like that like that there we go now I'm gonna go to my settings I'm gonna set it up like a YouTube banner so it's 2120 width and I believe 345 height I'm pretty sure um, and we want to just do frame range manual um, and then we'll adjust that later on uh, let's go to save uh, we're gonna do PNG and you want to save it to a folder uh, anywhere just make a folder and save it as you can see here's the last one that I saved in a folder called cool but I'm just gonna cancel this out um, and then you want to check alpha channel um, and let's see what else you want to go to anti-aliasing go to best um, and then two by two in the max level and then filter I use an, the animation one uh, you can use the still image one I don't know if there's much of a difference uh, I'm not like an animation expert but for this it really I don't think affects it regardless and let's go to effect let's click an ambient occlusion as well as depth of field and global illumination and, and go back to the depth of field tag or tab and go to blur strength two percent and then click out of that we're good for now um, and I like to get some sample text so I'm just gonna go to mo text and my cinema 40 might freeze right now no no we're good and I'm gonna just call this tutorial of course for whatever banner you're doing you wanna put that text in so you kinda get a visual of what it's gonna sorta look like so I'm gonna bring this down so middle of my banner would be like right there this text is probably way too big for that so I'm gonna make it even smaller so like that um, okay so like this is my banner you can see like the light gray and then dark gray this is not my banner this is so I want it to be like middle of that um, so there we go that's the sample text we won't render that out we'll delete that before we render but it's just there as like to show us the text and give us a visual of it I guess um, and then the next step you want to do you want to go to your content browser presets and the MMG folder that's motion drop uh, that's how this plugin works. It's not like in your plugin section. Um, I believe it tells you how to install it when you download the plugin, so just check that out if you're not sure how to install this. Um, and then you just want to click it and drag it on and go back to objects. And if, you're, if your content browser is not there, make sure your layout is on startup. I forgot to mention that. Um, and if I click play, you can see there's this just thing twirling back and forth. That is the motion drop effect. So I'm just going to hit pause, go back to zero. And I'm going to show you guys like my settings and stuff. So uh, I'm just going to go to generator. And I'm going to check all six of the motion drops. So if I play, you can see there's six of them going. Uh, you can do as many as you want. If it's like small text or a logo, you don't have to have as many. Or if you just don't want as many, you don't need them. You can make them thicker or whatever. You can just customize it however you want. doesn't matter to me. Not for me. It's just whoever your creativity, just let it loose and do whatever you want. Um, and then let's see let's go to mesh and mesh this is how you create the width of it the length of it and how uh, rounded it is so if I just go like right there uh, I'm just gonna adjust the tail to not be as tall so I'm gonna go to like 8 radius I'm gonna go to about 25 so it's a bit thicker and then resolution this is how like rounded it is I'm gonna go 50% because of the tutorial if you have a good computer you can go like all the way up um, which I don't dare to do because my computer is poop and would not allow me to do that. 
So I'm going to go about 50. And then you can also change the shape of it here, but I don't like to mess with that because I feel like the shape is fine the way it is. Um, and then, let's see, if we play this out, you can see it's just like the standard shape, which this is actually the sort of the shape I used in my um, the banner that I made. But um, there are some ways you can change uh, the way it moves or whatever. I haven't even like figured it out very well. But um, I believe you mess with the drops, or not the drops, the distance, the speed, and the seed. And that's like how you get different waves and like different different directions of the drops going. I, I didn't mess with any of this stuff because I didn't even know about this at all. I just kind of used motion drop like a noob. And all I did was go to follow path and I added, um, what was it, like a cogwheel. Hit C on the keyboard and I went to motion drop and I clicked the arrow and I clicked the cogwheel and it slightly changed the direction of it. As you can see, I don't even think it did for this one. I mean, kind of. But uh, you can like mess about with this and uh, you can do a lot. You can get like a bunch of different directions. So let me go. I'm just going to actually play with it. So distance. I'm going to decrease the distance like 60 for that one. Increase this one to like 120. I just jack this one up. Oh wait, that one. Bad. All right, let's see what this does. Change the distance a bit. So now uh, some of them go longer and some of them are closer in. I don't like the closer in ones, so I'm gonna jack this one up and jack this one up. And uh, as you can see, if I play this through, I I want it over the text more. It's really off to the side. Although, I could actually work with it, it would actually be pretty cool. Because it does come through, like right there, I can make the text appear, or like right there. That would be pretty cool, you just gotta mess with it. I'm gonna just, speed's fine for me, because it goes quick, um, that's good. I want it to do a lot, so in the GIF it actually has a lot going on, I think that's cool. Um, of course you can mess with it. I'm just gonna change these seeds, and I just wanna see what happens. So I'm just gonna do 30. All right, let's see what this does. Whoa. That's pretty cool. I actually really like that beginning. If you see, it like swoops across the text like multiple times. Like that. Oh, that is really sweet. I'm going to roll with that. Um, so I really like that seed and everything. So I'm just going to leave it like that. Uh, of course, you can mess around, obviously. I keep saying this, but like just do different things. Do things you haven't seen me do, other people do. Whatever, just get creative with this. You can do a lot. Um... Alright, so now we're in Photoshop. Um, the render I just made was taking a long time to render, so I'm just going to use the old one that I used for the other banner. So what I'm going to do is go to that folder. I'm just going to select all those pieces. This one is, yeah, exactly 30 frames. I'm just going to drag them all on. Just hold enter, let them go. Okay, so once that's all in, I'm just going to select them all and right click and rasterize. And then I'm going to make sure they're all in order and they're not. So I'm going to get this, these five. There should be at the bottom. And okay. So there we go. So it goes from the smallest to the largest, and I'm just going to make sure they're all invisible or so you can't see them. Uh, so uncheck the eye like that. And at this time, you'd want to design the uh, what, uh, the the background part of the banner. So like the black part right now. And I'm just going to put these all in a folder by themselves if you missed that. Um, so like this blue part, uh, you'd want to design that beforehand um, that'd be a smart thing to do and then you want to go back in and you want to go and I just said and a lot but okay sorry I, I have like this hiccup slash burp thing going on but um, let's continue so I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna recheck the bottom um, layer yeah the lowest layer so for in my case it was frame six as you can see now that's selected and I'm going to do create frame animation and at this time you should have like the background and everything um, and you kind of want to have a general idea where your text is going to go but that's not important yet 
Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here and create a new uh, layer on the timeline or like another section. I, I don't know what to call it. Um, and then I'm going to go and check the second layer. And in my case, the first layer doesn't have anything on it. But say if it were, I'd have to uncheck it. But since I don't really have to worry about that, I'm just going to leave it checked because it's easier. And every layer will uh, have the bottom layer checked, I believe, because the first one is checked. So if I create a new layer, oh, they're both checked, okay. But I'm going to uncheck them and check um, the next layer, and I'm just going to continually do this. So I'm going to create another layer, uncheck this one, recheck that one. And I guess, yeah, the first one isn't selected. That's a, Oh, yeah, okay, that's something else. Never mind, just forget about that. But uh, you just want to keep creating a new layer, unselecting the last layer, or last um, uh, last frame, and just keep going all the way until you do them all. So I'll just come back when that's done. <clears throat> okay, so once you have all that set up, um, make sure this is selected to forever. And if you play it through, should go through the animation pretty well like that and that should be good um, so let's go back to frame one uh, hopefully this Camtasia thing chills out um, <clears throat> so we have our whole colorful thing there and to make it two dimensional ish I guess um, I'm just gonna go to uh, actually now I'll go to frame one uh, you gotta be on frame one actually and you wanna go to this half colored in circle thing you wanna go to solid color and just pick a color that's like not fully saturated, but kind of saturated like like this one. And I'm just going to do a red. And I'm just going to leave it on normal, and I'm going to create a clip masking. So now if I play this through, it'll be a 2D effect, and it'll look really nice. Like, I like it so much better when it's like 2D. Um, but we can actually even spice it up a little, even more. So I'm going to go create a new layer, right-click, create a clip masking, go to my gradient, make sure I'm on radial, white to black. I'm just going to kind of go like this, kind of like an angle, and put this on overlay. Um, so like this part is white, you can't see it, but this is like white and the rest is black. So if I play this through, you can see there's a kind of a gradient going on on this. Um, now this one is too strong, and I don't like it like that. So I'm going to bring down the opacity like 30. Now let's see if this looks better. Yeah, and that just looks 100 times better. Like I feel like that looks so sick. I don't even know why, but I think it looks dope. Um, if you guys, I, I wasn't going to show you guys how to do text, but if you guys want to do text, uh, all you need to do is get some text. I'm just going to do this real quick. Tutorial. Spelled it wrong. Don't care. I'm holding Shift and Alt to shrink this down evenly like that. And if I want it, so say I want it to appear as the swoops come in, the, the curls. Uh, I'm going to go here where it says uh, propagate frame is that what it says? I can't I can't read it, but uh, I'm gonna uncheck. I think I believe it's propagate, 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 propagate frame one, propagate frame one, whatever. I'm gonna uncheck that and make frame one zero percent opacity. It always seems to do that. So zero, frame two. Um, let's go zero. Where should I have it come in at? So it'll be zero up to frame four. So frame four, you're gonna be zero two. Frame three, you'll be zero. And then frame 5, it'll gradually come in. So I'll do like 20, 50, 70, and then 100. Uh, let's play this through. And as you can see, when it comes up, the text kind of appears. And that's kind of the effect I go for with this. Of course, you can mix it around, do a bunch of effects. But I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, leave a like. At 150 likes, I'll leave the... PSD to this one in the description, uh, this Logan banner. If you guys want to check that out, so you guys can play around with text, the text more, and get a good, good idea for it. Um, but I hope you guys learned a cool effect today for these GIF banners. Um, yeah, so thank you guys for watching, and I'll talk to you guys later.